The Xbox One controller is pretty damn good for, well, the Xbox and PC. But if you want something a little bit more out of your controller, the Xbox One Elite probably comes to mind. But Razer, that's known for its PC peripherals, is offering its own high-end solution in the Wolverine Ultimate. And while it's a great piece of hardware, the price will have you thinking twice. First off, it's 160 US dollars. It only works through a wired connection. That can be a straight up turnoff considering that the Elite goes for 150 bucks and works both wired and wirelessly. At least the Wolverine comes with a long micro USB cable of about 10 feet. But the notch at the USB port makes most other cables unusable. The Razer Wolverine Ultimate does have some sweet features though. The analog sticks are smooth and frictionless. You can also swap out the sticks for either a convex one or an extended stick, but you only get one of each. These pop out easily, but they still stay in place while you're playing. The buttery smooth feel of the sticks also carries into the shoulder buttons and triggers, which have super light resistance. Trigger stops are found behind the controller and can shorten the throw to about half the distance if you prefer. The biggest selling point of this controller is the six extra programmable buttons. You get two additional shoulder buttons labeled M1 and M2, and four triggers on the back labeled M3 through M6. They're super easy to program. You just hold down the leftmost button on the bottom row, press the trigger or bumper you want to map, then the button you want it to act as. And the back triggers are easy to actuate, but they don't feel as natural as the paddles that you see on the Elite. The D-pad can also be swapped between a four-way and an eight-way cap. However, this design has a slight flaw in that the cap can pop out if you press left or down with too much pressure. The face buttons feel just like mouse clicks. While this takes some getting used to, the distinct tactile feedback and short travel distance of A, B, X, and Y is much more responsive. Now I played through hours and hours of Cuphead and Destiny 2 with the Wolverine Ultimate, and the controller was a joy to use. In Cuphead, being able to constantly hold down the right trigger to shoot and dash at a moment's notice with the left trigger made the game a bit more enjoyable, since the triggers have such a light resistance. I programmed the M triggers in the back to do the special moves and lock myself into place, but their placement isn't that great for moves that need a split second reaction. Even though I have long fingers, they're not as easy to reach as I'd like. I stuck to using A for jumping, and the mouse click feel of the face buttons was satisfying and on point. In Destiny 2, I programmed jump, reload, crouch, and weapon switching to the back triggers and the extra shoulder buttons. This way, I'd never have to take my right thumb off the stick. I felt a lot more nimble and agile. I was able to react, fire back, and leap into the air or do a slide to throw off enemies in crucible matches. As for other features, it has that Razer Chroma RGB lighting around the home button that you can customize through Razer software. The handles have a grippy rubberized texture, and you'll find on-the-fly mute and volume controls on the bottom row of buttons. Oh, and you can't forget the neat carrying case that comes with the controller. Razer's Wolverine Ultimate is built incredibly well and has some great features, but for 160 bucks and something that only works through a wire, it's a tough sell, especially when the Xbox One Elite controller is cheaper and works wirelessly. I hope you all enjoyed this video, and if you want to see more stuff like this, stick to GameSpot.com and watch all our game tech features where we break down the tech that drives the games we love. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon.